And now for something completely different. Welcome back to another episode of Art House 2. To the Fart House. I'm Kate. And I'm Jamie. And this time, it was Jamie's turn to pick the topic. What did you pick for us, Jamie? Kate, let me tell you. I chose a topic called medically induced fun. Medically induced fun is on everybody's mind. We're going to focus on that this week. And my first pick is 1981's Halloween 2. I love the hospital setting in this movie. People are acting like it's not a big deal that multiple teenagers were murdered in their small little town. They're hot tubbing, they're dicking around all afternoon, they're slipping on blood and cracking their skulls open. It doesn't make any sense. Haddonfield Memorial uh, is not a great hospital. Don't go there. Um, so for this challenge, I thought I would take it to another level and see how many movies I could find with female doctor leads. And I was specifically looking at movies and not television shows. And I have to say, I was terribly, terribly disappointed in the, the, the options that were available. Are we in the 21st century? We are. We are. Okay. Just checking because apparently movies with female doctor leads is not yet. So I had to go all the way back to pre-code in order to find some movies with female doctor leads. Um, pre-code and just uh, after the code was enforced, so late 30s and 40s. But I'm going to start it off with one that doesn't have a female doctor, but is from the pre-code area, and it's called Night Nurse. The amazing Barbara Stanwyck plays a nurse. It also includes Joan Blondell, who is phenomenal, and a very, very, very young Clark Gable, who's the baddie. I don't know how to thank you. Never mind that. Get busy with her. Give her a stomach wash. I'll call the doctor. Listen, you'll do what I tell you. What are you trying to do, what he did? No, but you're not going to call a doctor. You're a nurse. You give her the wash yourself. I can't, except on the doctor's order. Oh, yes, you can. Oh. And what's more, you will. I can't very well with a broken wrist. My choice also involves nurses, the student versions of nurses. <laughs> Student Nurses from 1970 from Roger Corman, directed by a woman, Stephanie Rothman, who put out a lot of really great forward-thinking exploitation movies. They remain exploitation movies, but they're, they also take up uh, interesting topics about societal changes, female roles in society, and it's a very interesting movie. At the same time, it has all the tropes of exploitation cinema that you know that you love. <laughs> So for my second pick, I wanted to stick with Barbara Stanwyck. Ten years later, in 1941, she's in a movie called You Belong to Me, and finally, she gets to be the doctor. Are you a relative? No, I've never seen him before. Then perhaps I can handle this better alone. As you wish. I thought I might help. I'm Dr. Hunt of Los Angeles. Doctor? And she does an amazing role as, as a GP. Uh, she plays opposite Henry Fonda, who is a playboy millionaire who keeps trying to tempt her out of the very uh, fulfilling life she's leading as a doctor. Highly encourage you to, to watch You Belong to Me, directed by Wesley Ruggles. I was going to ask you that later. My uh, next choice is The Abominable Dr. Fibes from uh, 1971. Now, Dr. Fibes is not a doctor. He holds a double doctorate in uh, theology and music, but he, uh, he wants to kill nine or ten doctors who, uh, who uh, misdiagnosed and uh, killed his wife on the operating table. So basically, it's Vincent Price. It's one of my favorite performances by him. It's a throwback movie. Uh, if you want to hear Clockwork Robots sing uh, uh, One More for the Road, it's a great movie. Uh, and the, uh, his murder choices are like Scooby-Doo. They are so specific to being movie murders that it's fantastic. Nine killed you. Nine shall die. Okay, so my third pick is Interns Can't Take Money, which is from 1937, so just after the code is starting to be enforced. It stars the dishy Joel McRae, and it is actually the first film uh, appearance, the first screen appearance of Dr. Kildare. Subsequently, there'll be a whole bunch of more Dr. Kildare um, movies that will come out, but this is actually the first one. Barbara Stanwyck once again makes an appearance in this movie, so there may be a Barbara Stanwyck theme going on for me. It doesn't hold the whole time, but definitely for these first three. It's interesting because that this was the movie in which I learned, because I didn't realize it, that around this time that this is made, and so this is, again, 1937, uh, that, that interns 
actually lived in the hospital. So it makes sense that that's where the word resident came from because they actually live in the hospital and they can't take money. You must think I'm crazy arguing like this. But that money doesn't mean a thing to you if you're gonna give it back. And it doesn't mean anything to them. I wish I could tell you what it means to me. Well, if the money were mine, I'd be glad to help you, but this money's got to go right back where it came from. You see, as I told you before, interns just don't take money. We agree not to when we get our appointments. It's because the patient that can't pay is entitled to an even break, too. Otherwise, it'd mean discrimination. It's the principle of the thing, don't you see? Interns can't take money, 1937. Be sure and check it out. That's funny, because I've bribed a lot of doctors in my life. <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't pick an intern. My next movie is Malice from 1993. It's written by Scott Frank and, uh, and Aaron Sorkin, two OK writers. It also stars Alec Baldwin, Nicole Kidman, and America's uh, most boring uh, actor, Bill Pullman, who he's good. <laughs> But, you know, he's just that guy. It involves uh, Alec Baldwin being one of the worst doctors in the history of doctoring. It's a pot boiler. It's twisty. It's turny. Uh, it's about kind of the medical field, but not really. And it, like it has so many red herrings that there's like four left at the end that they don't even talk about. Meh. You ask me if I have a God complex? Let me tell you something. I am God. Uh, so my fourth pick, which actually kind of ties in some ways to my third pick, a movie from 1952 called uh, The Girl in White. This is a biopic starring June Allison about the pioneering female surgeon Emily Dunning Berenger. She is actually the first intern in New York City. The way it ties in with the previous movie is uh, this was around the turn of the century. If you it, remember my previous remark that uh, interns reside at the the hospital. Part of what was so groundbreaking about what she did becoming the first intern was that she had to reside at the hospital. So um, the movie itself is dealing with all of those issues related to how do you introduce a woman, how do you accommodate them in terms of um, bathroom needs and, and uh, it's sleeping arrangements and, and all of that. Um, it's a wonderful movie. It was directed by John Sturgis, and it's really fascinating to just explore w what it took 100 years ago for a woman to break into a male-dominated field and how many of those things are still really relevant today. <laughs> My last choice is 1978's Coma, the, the book written by a doctor, Dr. Robin Cook, and he gave it to his friend, Dr. Michael Crichton, and Crichton wrote the script and directed it. And it's a really good, strong, slow burn thriller. Geneve Bujold is really good in it, Michael Douglas is really good, Richard Widmark is really good. It reminds me of Clonus, the parts horror minus the Clonus. Comas are good because if you're in a coma, you can't see the bill. Hey, oh, also, uh, <laughs> this movie proves that I don't want to be in the hospital because if, uh, if somehow they can take young Tom Selleck from us, then I'm not going to stand a chance. <laughs> oh, promises, promises. And you got a female Dr. Lee, didn't you, in coma? Yeah, absolutely. Did. My final pick, which actually is kind of a joint pick in a way, I mean, I'm the one that picked it, uh, but uh, I think we, we mutually enjoy it, uh, is the 1970 movie MASH, directed by Robert Altman. Where do you even begin <laughs> about how incredibly wonderful this is? I'm a huge Robert Altman fan, um, and this is probably in the top five of the movies that he made. Um, it, he, he did a lot of exploration with sound, um, and this movie is really phenomenal in the way in which it integrates that that placement of microphones all over and you're getting all sorts of different sounds and it adds to the chaotic feeling that you would imagine would be in that kind of environment. Uh, uh, Nothing, uh, sir. Not a pig. Is that true that I hear about you? Do the back of the kidney. Come on. Oh, yeah. Well, get me out of there, man. Give me a clamp. Give me a clamp. 
Here we go. Captain Pierce, did you call me? No, I didn't. And my name's Hawkeye. Give me the sample. I can't really see. It's like the Mississippi River down there. If you if you want to take that sound design question farther, you can watch McCabe and Mrs. Miller, where he yes. takes it to the nth degree, yeah. where it's almost like troubling. You feel so a part of the conversations, where you don't know what to focus on. And Mash is like a junior version of that. Mash has always one of my been one of my favorite movies. I love Elliot Gould in the '70s. Think about the '70s. There there was five years in the '70s where Elliot Gould was the biggest male lead, was the biggest star. Yeah. Uh, and he was married to Barbara Streisand. So like America was Elliot Gould's <laughs> playground in the 70s. And it's just funny to think about Elliot Gould being that kind of an actor, you know, but it's the 70s and he certainly was. My connection with uh, MASH is so strong that I named uh, my German Shepherd uh, Trapper John McIntyre, MD. That's his full name. He didn't spend six years in dog medical school to not be called doctor. <laughs> As you can see, uh, my dog and Elliot Gould are literally twins. So what's your dog's medical specialty? Uh, he, uh, anesthesia, because <laughs> uh, he passes gas. That's a joke from MASH. <laughs> How did we do that? I'm not kidding. We didn't plan that. <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for our medically induced fun. That is it. No more medically induced fun. <laughs> 2021. Nobody's going to the hospital. Oh, promises, promises. So we'll see you again next time in Art House to the Fart House. <laughs>